Order, order. I'm calling uh, the Honourable Shane Jones. Sir, before I opened my mouth, you were screaming order. Please assure me that it's directed to that side of the house and not this sort of You're very right. modest individual who's about to yeah. uh, oh. share a, a, a thought of three. Sir, I'm giving uh, you in, the in, in, in the spirit of fraternal relations, I stand with my colleagues to support Russell Norman's uh, private member's bill this afternoon. Let there be no doubt about that, sir. Um, sir, while one has to suffer the slings and arrows of coalition building into the future, I'm talking possibly about Winston Peters there, but that's another matter. <laughs> but, sir, I want to actually begin by directing the attention of our colleagues on the other side of the House to something that's already in the legislation, six, six, section 58 2C, which actually requires a level of transparency and decision making to, avoiding, to avoid a, prejudi a prejudicial view about our reputation internationally taking root. Now, sir, for that side of the House to insist that Mr Norman's contribution is, number one, ultra-virus the Act, number two, un likely to undermine the viability of the fund or its profitability shows the characteristically show, uh, showy but shallow level of information that they actually use when talking about the Cullen Fund. Now, sir, we had um, a figure from uh, Madame Tussaud's uh, Wax Museum Dr Nick Smith come and lecture us about this is designed to ruin, sir, this is designed to ruin the country's reputation in terms of climate change. On that point, sir, I have to agree with the colleagues from, uh, from the Green Party. That is not being done by this bill. That level of opprobrium settling upon the fine reputation of Aotearoa has been manufactured by that side of the House. And worse than, sir, by the behaviour of their officials overseas who are so embarrassed that they can't even look straight into the eye of their confreres from other negotiating teams. So that's got nothing to do, sir, with this bill. The worsening of our reputation in relation to climate change is a deliberate policy direction being pursued by the current government, which they are entitled to do as a part of what they think is the maximum or optimum mix of policies for the country. But, sir, we know that as a consequence of those policies, the costs will fall on the most vulnerable. So let me come back to the bill. It is not unreasonable that the Cullen Fund focus on those areas that is not actually either going to worsen the country's reputation or, sir, create negative externalities that will not be picked up by the businesses that are running the enterprises which the Cullen Fund is investing in. Now, sir, it can get... To, uh, to, so it may actually overrun slightly. I understand that uh, Annette King, the redoubtable member for out at Miramar Way, closely related to certain other members on the other side of the House today, opened a gas station owned, sir, by the Cullen Fund. So there has to be some balance. The Cullen Fund currently does have investments, sir, in areas where perhaps, sir, 50 per cent, 50 per cent, not unlike the vote capture we will enjoy in two years' time. I like that figure. I like that figure. Now, sir, I'm not talking about my biological makeup of 50, 20, 25, no. Sir, we are talking about why this piece of legislation will actually enhance the reputation of the Cullen Fund. It's not going to throttle, it's not going to undermine the work of the Guardian, sir. It is just going to direct them to ensure that the investments don't reward those kinds of industries that are slowly but surely choking the transition of not only the fund, the nation, but in many respects, many of the developed countries, sir. Now, sir, the Cullen Fund guardians, sir, the Cullen Fund guardians were encouraged by the government to move towards 50% of the capital invested into domestic industries, indigenous industries. That has been an abject failure. Now, sir, it could be that that's what they fear. They say one thing, but actually deliver another. So I think the, the alarmist rhetoric coming from the other side of the House, reflective, unfortunately, of the loud but vacuous uh, minds that is conceiving it, should not worry about Mr Norman being the Minister of Finance. That decision has been made by higher forces. Higher forces, sir. No, those decisions will be made by the colleagues here, and they lie well after the next election. But coming back to the Cullen Fund, sir, it's a fine fund, reflective of the uh, very innovative approach that this side of the government this side of the party, this side of the House took to the art of government. Thank you very much. 
I call Julianne Ginter. <laughs> Ten o'clock, Mr. That. Speaker. Thank you. It is a great pleasure to speak.